So welcome, my name is Matthew Weinstein. I'm the Baltimore Region Director for Progressive Maryland. Uh, we're here this morning to announce the launch of our bus billboard campaign targeting Verizon Maryland for their failure to invest in fiber optic technology here in the city of Baltimore. Is that, a little bit? Is that good? Uh, as anyone who's a native in Baltimore knows, there's a long and unfortunate history of uh, companies, industries not investing in Baltimore. If you look at the history of banks, of mortgage companies, with auto insurance, with supermarkets, with cable TV, we have a long history of redlining and other disparate treatment of Baltimore by major industries. And now we're finding ourselves in a similar situation once again uh, as Verizon has decided that they will not invest in Baltimore with fiber optics. Uh, fiber optics is the next great leap forward in information technology. Uh, it is many times faster than DSL or cable. It's why so many other countries from Japan and Korea to Germany and France have faster internet than we do. Uh, fiber optics is finally coming to the United States. But the problem is, uh, it's not coming to Baltimore. Uh, so far, Verizon uh, has invested and is installing and deploying their fiber optic network in Baltimore County, Anne Arundel County, Howard County, Harford County, Montgomery County, Prince George's County. Uh, they're investing in all the major jurisdictions in Maryland, as well as uh, all the major cities on the eastern seaboard. Washington, D.C., Richmond, Philadelphia, New York, Trenton, Camden, uh, every comparable city to Baltimore, but they're not investing in Baltimore. Last year, Verizon, in spite of the recession, made profits of over $10 billion on revenues of over $100 billion. So there is absolutely no excuse for Verizon to say that they don't have the money, even at a time of recession, to invest in Baltimore. So, in Washington, D.C., what it took was a strong community coalition of communities, civil rights organizations, uh, churches, consumer advocates all coming together, demanding equal treatment. That coalition took a year. That campaign took a year, and then finally Verizon decided about a year ago that they would invest in fiber optics in Washington, D.C. We're doing the same thing uh, here in Baltimore. We built a coalition that includes many of the leading community, church, labor, civil rights organizations in our city and in our state, and many of them are represented here today. We're calling on Verizon, whose corporate headquarters is right here across the street. Stop redlining our city. Give Baltimore, our communities, our businesses, the same access to technology, to high-speed internet that we need to be competitive in the 21st century and in the decades going forward. I'm going to introduce a couple of uh, representatives of our coalition members to say a few words. Uh, first, uh, we're joined by Reverend Johnny Golden, who is, as well as being the uh, pastor of New Unity Baptist Church, is the president of the Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance, the leading faith-based coalition uh, here in Baltimore. Thank you for being here today. You're welcome, man. Thank you so very, very much. We're here to say that not only is our concern that Baltimore is left behind local, but it's global. How interesting that today, Julius Janikowski, the chairman of the FCC, is laying out a new nationwide plan for America in terms of what she needs to do in terms of being uh, a partner in the global growth of internet capacity. We rank 15th in, a, in the world today, 15th in the world, America, and Baltimore ranks even lower than that within the United States. We need to do more, we need to be sure that we're involved, that our community is not left behind. This is the 21st century and we are still operating as a 20th century uh, entity. We need to move forward. Thank you so very much. God bless you all. Great. Thank you, Reverend Golden. Uh, buses will be uh, going by, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this 
exact ad, but a much larger version of it. Uh, one of the best ways that we know here in Baltimore to get out our message and call attention to this situation is to put the message on the sides of buses. And so this is uh, a, a uh, uh, full color uh, miniature edition of the ad uh, that is now on about 50 buses uh, rolling through uh, Baltimore during the coming weeks and months uh, to get out the message and let folks know and also to get more people signed up. We have a website, uh, whereisbemorefios.org. We're already dozens of organizations and uh, scores of individuals have signed up and uh, we invite others to do so. Uh, we're now going to hear from a representative of the labor movement from the Communication Workers of America uh, that is going to tell us a little bit about the uh, labor perspective and how this affects jobs in the current recession. Thank you. Um, as a member of the CWA oh, of Maryland, your name. Uh, my name is Ron McGuire. Um, as a member of the CWA of Maryland, of which we are number one in the nation as far as installation and maintenance of the FIOS, we're told that regularly from the company. So we would uh, welcome the opportunity to install uh, FIOS in the city of Baltimore, keeping our members employed. Um, if the uh, company follows their present path of what they call self-termination, self uh, which we call layoffs, uh, we either lose jobs in Maryland or continue and actually increase uh, employment in the state of Maryland. But um, Fios, as far as compared to the 4G network, is 50 times faster, and there's absolutely no reason we don't provide the city of Baltimore with it. That's all. Thank you, Ron. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Ron. Uh, uh, let me also get a word from Aaron Wilkes. Uh, is the president of the Darley Park Community Association, and as a native Baltimorean, has a great uh, understanding of the history that we're seeing here. You know, for the longest time in our city, we've always gotten second-class citizenship, and quite frankly, uh, Verizon is essentially, while they're advertising to the folk in this city, but not making it available to us, it's similar to when we were going through the cable fight and how the same economic lines are being used about how economically it's not feasible. But it's interesting to me, it's always feasible when you're talking suburban areas, but when you're talking areas that serve poor, minority, and other folk, then you then all of a sudden you get into the economic piece. And quite frankly, all we're asking Verizon to do is to treat us with dignity and respect and equality as their customers in this city and as, as downright consumers. Treat our dollar with the same dignity as anyone else's. Good. Any other questions?